Hi, this is Don Olszewski and welcome to another episode of How'd She Do That? And today we're going to make this fabulous card. I posted this a while ago on my blog and I've been getting a lot of questions. So I thought I'd do a quick tutorial for you, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the texture here. So I have out this wonderful new texture embossing folder from Stampin' Up! It's called Lacy Brocade. It's in the 2012 Holiday Mini Catalog. Love it. Um, it is so versatile, not just for Christmas, the holidays, but um, Halloween. It, um, it just has a great texture to it. So what I'm going to do, now my folder looks dirty because it is. I am using the old style pad. These, um, This is crumb cake. And I'm going to rub, I'm actually going to rub both sides. And the reason for that is because I'm going to make more than one card. So to be a little more efficient with my stampin', I'm going to put two pieces together. These measure four inches by five and a quarter. I stack them on top of each other. I'm laying them together in the folder that is already rubbed with the ink. And I'm going to put it through the Big Shot with sandwiched in between. So here we go. I've already run it through, but I just wanted to share a tip. For my um, texture folders, I like to use no tabs, and I know a lot of people like to use tab one. Now, because I have two pieces of paper in here, um, I definitely recommend no tabs on that. All right, so now, We'll take this apart, and here we go. We have one side, which looks like this. Come in a little closer so you can see it. You can see how that gets some more texture on it, and here's like this is the side with no ink, but then if I flip it, then I have this. So yes, I have kind of a debossed and embossed look, um, two different looks for my cards, but that's okay. I don't think two people are going to look at the card at the same time, so um, I love this because it gives me lots of choices for this, this particular folder. Now, one thing I want to add is if you have the new style foam pad, firm foam pads, all right, I do recommend um, using a brayer to get that on. It is um, a it is a little, a lot more ink is releasing off of that, so you have a little more control of the ink when you use a brayer. So that's just a tip I wanted to share. So next we're going to do some stamping, and this measures two and a half, excuse me, two and a half this way, three and three quarters this way, and this is crumb cake. So this is actually a monochromatic card, and all I'm using is crumb cake. We're going to stamp a greeting, this greeting here. From, it's called Greetings of the Season, also from the Holiday Mini Catalog. And I'm going to use Early Espresso. And this is the firm foam pad. And you do have what I call um, a light touch that you want to. If you're a stamper who likes to um, ink up kind of a tap, 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 you definitely use a light touch. If you're a stamper that just needs to, you know, just hit it once, maybe like what I call the Goldilocks touch. Not too hard, not too soft, somewhere in the middle. So we're going to stamp it near the bottom corner. Just let it kind of soak in a little bit. And there we go. Beautiful. I love the look of these new firm foam pads. They have great coverage. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do additional stamping. And that is from Watercolor Winter. Love this stamp set, but I'm particularly drawn to the pine and needles and the pine cone. Okay, so I've gotten these two out and we're going to use Always Artichoke and Early Espresso. And um, this is a two-step stamping um, set. So we're going to start with er Always Artichoke. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and open these both. And I'm going to stamp the pines in that. But what I'm going to do is I'm just, I want a little um, early espresso in this area. So I'm just going to stamp the, just this area. I'm gonna, 
Do you see what I'm doing? I'm going to tap just the stem onto the the early espresso. Now I'm not worried about because that's a much darker ink than my green artichoke. I'm not really worried that I'm gonna muddy up my colors. So I'm gonna stamp this in the corner here. Just eyeball it. That looks right. Again, I like to let these soak a little bit when I'm using the solid color cardstock versus our our light vanilla or white. There you go. And see, we have the little brown here, so I'll come in so you can really see that. See how we're getting the two tones? And then I'll come in with the early espresso on the pine cone. And we'll just attach it to the pine. And there we go. Isn't that pretty? Now, once this dries, we're going to add um, just a hint of glitter to it. Okay, so now we're going to do the little bit of sponging here. Now this is what everyone was wondering. How did I create this frame? So that is essentially with sponging. So we're going to take crumb cake. This is the new firm foam. And I'm going to dab up my sponge. Get some ink on there. There we go. And then I tend to be, I like the flicking. Um, technique. So I hold it with my left and I flick ink onto it with my sponge. And then I just go all the way around. So there we go. Now what makes this whole thing pop is the layer that I'm going to add to the card. So here's the layer. The layer measures, I'll get that for you, is two and three quarters by three and a quarter. No, nope, excuse me, by four inches. All right, and now when you add that to the same color, look how that pops. That's how you get the frame. So it really isn't any um, magical trick. It's quite simple. Um, so that's how I finished up um, that beautiful focal piece for this card. One is I've put some dimensionals on the back side. Gotta have dimensionals. Okay, and we're just going to center that, looks good, and voila, our card is done. Isn't that beautiful? So just to show you, let's see, do I have a sample here? So this is what I call an Audi, the texture, and this is what I call an Innie on the texture here. So I'll come in really close so you can really kind of see the differences. There you go. Well, I hope you enjoyed that today, and, and I hope that answered your questions. I know many of you had them. So be sure to stop by my blog at DoStampinWithDawn.com for lots more inspiration and creative ideas.